The first thing that you're going to want to understand is how to work with the library. Think of where these four lines come together as the center of the screen. Consider the area that you're going to zoom into as where the locations of the stars are as opposed to where they come together in the center of the screen. That's how you can mentally orientate which effect is what. Obviously, because the star to my bottom left is to my bottom left, that's the area of the screen that it's going to zoom into. Beyond that, the next level of zoom, the next deeper level of zoom, is next. Just for the heck of it, there's two-thirds. Consequently, the end is max. Just that simple, you have a vis visual orientation of what you are grabbing and dragging. Center zooms follow the same basic rules, except the star really doesn't show you much unless it's animated. So, 25, 2 thirds, max. Same thing. To install the templates with the least amount of trouble and the easiest way to do the correct settings, I had you set up this exact layout. And myself personally, I don't like working with a screen this small. I think it's too small. So the way to change that so it doesn't screw everything up, you can come up here, drop your icon size by I think two levels. Yeah, you can drop it by that much. Come over here, grab the window resizer. You have to drag it in segments. Okay, see, now we are lined up again. We have a lot of space left here. We'll drop this down. Now we have a reasonable size screen to work on, at least for myself personally. I prefer a screen this size. So I myself am going to save this to Layout Settings. I'm going to start by showing you how to crop an image very quickly. Because photographs are shot in so many different aspect ratios, the majority of them are somewhat incompatible with widescreen video. All I mean by that is the image won't completely fill the screen. The image above was shot with a newer camera that shoots in widescreen mode. I've included three examples of the most popular photograph aspect ratios for an example. Okay, you can crop these as well. For these type of images, your starting point will be to select a center zoom preset. Targeting the corners doesn't work well with a small image. Adjustment techniques are identical. I already have an image in my timeline. You can also do it from your overlay track if you desire. I'm going to target this area of the photo. So basically it's located in the top right 25% of the screen. I'm going to grab that particular effect, drag it in here. I'm going to open Customize Motion. I'm going to click on my first keyframe. That level of zoom is now applied. If you want to increase the level of zoom, you come down here to the size box. Simply select up arrow to increase the level. You can also swipe inside of this box and type in a numerical value, but I find working with the arrows to be pretty simple and fast enough. Okay, I'm now going to back it up to the original level of the zoom that the preset applied to point out the fact that you can also zoom out further because 25% of the screen might be less than you want to actually capture. Simply reposition your image. One feature that should be mentioned is that I had originally applied a little extra zoom to this image. That information is still stored on this keyframe and I can click undo to undo that last move by clicking on reset. But you only get to do that once. You can't back up two moves or three moves. You can only do it once. But the fact you can do it once is a good thing. To reposition the image, simply come up into the image, move it around. If you go too low, 
you're going to leave a black dark mark on your final output. So try to keep it full image. I like that look. All I got to do, come over here, right click, copy and paste to all. That locks in that look. She's cropped just that quick. But it gets much better. For myself personally, between saved paths and customized motion, those two features for me are Corel's new shining stars of new tools. When it comes to cropping images, a simple crop is generally all that you need. But all of the additional adjustments that are available also work on everything else, so you want to know about these. Having an understanding of all the adjustments available to you will help you to improve the quality of your editing. So I'm going to start by dragging in my top right zoom factor. I'm going to open Customize Motion. The first thing I want to discuss is size. Size down here is measured in a numerical number. 100 represents the entire viewing area. 500, I'm going to type in, represents the maximum zoom level that this program will zoom in. The number 200 correlates to one quarter of the screen. For now, I'm just returning back to the original size. You can actually click on this chain here, which will allow you to zoom independently the height and the width of the image. However, it does introduce some distortion into the image. I'm going to decrease the X, which squishes the image. Reset that. And same height wise. You could do it up here, but once you're zoomed in a bit, you won't see those very well. They're harder to see. Anyway, reset that. So if you did want to apply that sort of distortion, now you know how to do it. I'm going to relock this. In general, I don't recommend using this particular feature, but there are cases where that's a good thing to use. What I really like, though, is the rotation factor. From here, you can apply three-dimensional rotation, which opens up special effects possibilities that stretch beyond the imagination. I'm not going to get into those type things right now. I'm just going to introduce you to the tools. I'm simply going to click on the X rotation and increase it. See how it's rotating the image in a, down, in a spiral fashion? It'll flip it clean upside down, right side up. Click that to zero. That's that level of rotation. She's rotating from the center. The top is coming towards you and the bottom is going away. It shows up easier when you rotate it on the Y axis. It becomes a little more easy to see the effect. That's basically what you're doing is you're rotating the image away from you or in a circle, whatever. Okay, I'm going to reset that to zero. Your z-axis is just standard rotation. Nothing all that special about that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to get relatively close to the same settings of the previous image. It's something fairly close to that. And I'm now going to use the rotational tools to straighten out this image. Rotate that down a little bit. Okay. Once again, keep an eye on opening up areas of your screen. I'm going to slide that up. Okay, now I'm going to slide this box over a little bit so we can peek at the other image. You can tell I was standing down here looking up at it. And also, I'm going to rotate it on the other axis. Yeah, I'm getting a little carried away. I'm just going to zero this one out. Anyway, I've played around with it enough, but you get the gist of it. You can really, you can keep manipulating these numbers and get even a little better result than this. 
But at this point, you now have an understanding of how far you can go to really tweak your images and how they, how they appear. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy and paste to all. And that is cropping. Don't be too afraid by the blurriness in this image. I'm going to back it up. The actual sharpness of the image in the viewing window is reduced because the video editor can actually edit faster in that state. I'm going to render these two images so you can see what they look like completed. Okay, everything's rendered out. We have all this blurriness here. I'm just going to click on our rendered. See how much nicer that is? And here's our other one coming up. I'm now going to show you how to apply a pan and zoom effect. If the photograph you're using is of an aspect ratio different than 16 by 9, you should edit it in a photo editor into the 16 by 9 format. Then bring it in. Okay, I'm going to start by targeting the house up here. I'm just going to grab my top left 25%, drag it in here, right click, customize motion. I'm going to come to my first keyframe. I am then going to zoom into the house a bit. Okay, deciding that I like that look, all I do is I come down here, right click, copy and paste to all right, select OK. And very simply, right click, select copy. This will automatically bring this into the timeline when you drag your uh, pointer down here. Here you left click to paste. Right click, open customize motion. The key to making this work is you reverse your keyframes from this tab here. Click on that. Come to this keyframe select it and then you adjust your image to the next area you want to pan to. You can slide this over here to see what you're doing to see the image up here. I'm going to come into this water area zoom in a little bit tighter now I'm going to hover over this keyframe right click Copy and paste to all right, just like before. Select OK. The number of times you can do this is infinite. I'm just going to do it one more time. Come over here, right click, copy, left click, paste. OK, you're going to right click, open customize motion. Once again, reverse your keyframes. If your memory doesn't serve you well where you want to go next at this point, you can click inside this window and scroll your mouse wheel backwards. That will give you a peek at your image. Don't move it, just peek. Scroll back in. If you was zoomed in any tighter, the amount it would zoom out would be even less. Anyway, okay, come to your next keyframe. And I'm going to head to that galaxy down here. And I'm going to call that my exit point of the pan and zoom effect. You're going to want to zoom out at the end. So in order to do that, you have to work with your keyframes a little differently. Come this time, right click, copy, come to your last keyframe. Select Paste, come to the last keyframe, now you're going to have to zoom all the way out. Select Zero, I'm sorry, down here you select 100, up here select Zero, Zero. Okay, select OK. That's it, you're done. It's really a pretty simple effect.
and also if you want to change the speed that things are occurring in one of these things you can change the time of the entire effect at this point and customize motion will adapt to that okay I believe this tutorial has run long enough I could continue to throw scenarios at you to do different things but you can play around with it and figure out some things to do for yourself. This concludes part two of my three-part series. The last one will cover zoom in and zoom out effects with video. And don't forget to have fun with it. Enjoy and take care.